this the good doctor? Oh, yes, you're there. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me do the official introduction. We are so excited to welcome somebody who is a DJ, a personality, and an authority on all music dementia. We're very excited to welcome the one and only Dr. Demento to the show. You're on the air with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome. Woo, woo, woo. Wind up your radio. Hello, Tiffany. Hello, <laughs> Cold Radio. Go, go. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is Terry and, and the other host. And I want to say that I grew up listening to you. And, and to me, you are like the biggest legend in music. Well, thank you, Terry. It's fantastic that you're here around Halloween time, too, because one of the things I used to love doing when I listened to your show, and this is back in Rockford, Illinois, uh, back in the 80s, is I especially loved Halloween time on your show. Oh, yes. It's yeah. always a fun time for me. Definitely. And then some of the best songs I think were played, I mean, I always loved your show, but especially the uh, Halloween uh, parody type of songs. Now we've got a kind of meeting of, of both to where you're going to be actually hosting a Halloween event. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I've done a few of those before, and it's always lots of fun. Well, let's talk a little bit about the this one that w that's coming up next weekend, and that is the Long yeah. Beach Zombie Walk. The Zombie Walk. You know, I've done some fun events, but this will be my first zombie walk. Well, I was telling everybody I think it's quite appropriate, because I assume you'll be up there wearing your... Uh, usual tuxedo and I remember uh, there oh, was some yeah. remember there's somebody else that wore a tuxedo that was Bela Lugosi <laughs> in, in that great oh. zombie movie of his so yes indeed let me ask you, you be I wearing think Count Smokula has a, 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 a nice suit too that he'll be wearing so we'll, <laughs> we'll compare top hats you've got to be the two best dressed people there. <laughs> I've got to find oh, out yeah. though are you going to yeah, be wearing I've done some shows with the Count before so yeah. it's a lot of fun yeah things go way back God, oh, I'm not having flashbacks talking to you doctor I, I just remember so many things. Th things have really changed. I mean, we want to talk about the Halloween event, but I want to talk about how things have changed. Because talking about when I used to listen to you, my God, look at things the way they are now. I mean, there's literally no CDs anymore. There's no record stores. There's no comedy sections if there are record stores left. Oh, but you can find a lot of comedy on the Internet, and you can order it through your various places that still sell CDs through the mail, and there are actually a few record stores left of fingerprints in Long Beach is one I can think of. Oh, I have to check that out. I've never been there. I go to uh, Amoeba Records a lot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's certainly a landmark. Uh, fingerprints is, is a real nice store in, in Long Beach in, in the Arts District. Yeah. So it's well worth the trip. They got lots of great stuff. I hear tell that, that like the the things have changed a little bit in the fact that uh, it was actually reported that with some uh, releases that that actually still release in vinyl, that sales seem to be up in some areas in vinyl more than they are CDs. That's right. Hipsters have really discovered vinyl. Uh, they like uh, the covers and things, and uh, many still think it sounds better. And uh, there's a little bit, of course, of nostalgia in there too wanting to hear music the way that uh, people heard it in the past, but a lot of new music as well as a lot of old music coming out on vinyl, and, and, and that's nice. Well, I know you always said there was nothing that sounded like a, a vinyl album. I imagine you're still the same on that. Well, yeah, CDs are very useful for radio. They're very, very handy for running a radio show, but uh, vinyl, it's, 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 it's sweet. But in talking about this great event now, like you said, you've, you've hosted many Halloween things in, in the past. In fact, I believe you were one of the original hosts at Not Scary Farm, weren't you? Uh, I, I did host that once. Well, I, I performed. I performed with Weird Al Yankovic. We ah. did three or four nights there. And it was when Al was just starting his career and people were still just, just starting to get excited about his work. Uh, uh, but I hosted uh, three or four nights there and uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, then for the past for about the much of the first decade of the 21st century, shall we say, I, I hosted a gig at the, the Orange County Marketplace. Did mm. that usually the Saturday or Sunday before Halloween. And I'd get up there on stage and, and play a lot of the Halloween hits like I'm going to be doing this time. And that's where I worked with Count Smokula before. Wow. Well, I guess that's kind of a, a it brings to a good question. We've had a lot of people that are listeners of the show here that heard that you were coming on and has heard about the Long Beach Zombie Walk. And they said that they read that you were going to be, quote unquote, headlining Friday night. They want to know yeah. if they if they attend, what are they in store for? What is the Dr. D show all about? Because we know about well, you hosting, but you I'm, said I'm something about I'm going to do the Dr. Demento show pretty much on stage the way I do it on the radio, except it's going to be just about all Halloween music of course there is so much halloween music to play 
so uh, we'll be playing hits from the past and, and a few new ones too and uh, I'll be making scary faces and waving my top <laughs> hat and what tell uh, you know the actual program I don't know what I'm going to play it's I'm going to bring a whole lot of stuff and mm-hmm. it's going to be kind of free form I'll see what I think the people want to hear when I look into their their smiley scary faces <laughs> wow I'm yeah. sure there will be the monster mash somewhere along the way and sure. dinner with Drac but as for the rest of it we'll we'll kind of see yeah, I'm sure you've got to got to play one song. Uh, for instance, the dearly departed, my my friend, I loved him so much, Bobby Boris Pickett, who'd always oh, yeah. talk about playing a medley of his hit. <laughs> oh yes, that's that's how he would describe it on stage. He actually did did a lot in his life, made quite a few records. Uh, he also took part in not a Halloween song, but another thing that was very popular on my show called Star Trek. Right. Yes. And you know, yeah, I Bobby. Back in the day when I first got that, uh, I, I received from somebody, I don't remember who, and I saw uh, his name wasn't on there as Bobby Pickett, and, like they had mislabeled or something, and, and come to find out it's him, and I couldn't even believe that was him. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. he's Peter Ferrara actually does the majority of the voices on that record, but they wrote it together, and, and Bobby does some of the voices, so that's how it is. So, you know, where you are in life, okay... Uh, I can imagine that you're really enjoying what you do because, you know, pretty much when you have your stage shows in this net, you can be totally free form. And you talked about before how there's no more free form and radio and stuff. Uh, are you happy now? Oh, I'm very happy. Yeah, the internet uh, is lots of fun. People can hear it all over the world, wherever they are. They don't have to hear it even at a particular time. They can hear my internet show anytime they want. Uh, it's available 24 hours a day on demand. Uh, streaming audio and uh, beyond that they can also hear over a thousand older shows you can if you listen to the show like uh, in rockford in what 1980 or whatever it was you might be able to find the exact same show that you remember from then fantastic i, I know i actually bought uh is that a record collector show one time and I actually bought a disc because you used to send your shows to the radio station. It was actually on a 33 and a third record album. Yes, we did. You found one of those. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was my prized possession. I love it. But okay. it's, it's fantastic. I'm glad you've embraced Internet Radio because that's pretty much what we do here. And I think Internet Radio really is the future, and I think you definitely belong here. Now, so people can get a little bit more details. Now, we're going to talk more about the event, but we want to mention this, too, at drdemento.com. Uh, exactly how can they get your show? Is it like a, a, a pay-on-demand type situation, or how do they actually... Yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, single shows are $2 payable through PayPal. You you go to the site, and it'll uh, kind of walk you through it, tell you what to do. You you pay with PayPal, and uh, then you can uh, stream the show, the, the current show or whatever else you, you want to hear. We've got, we got two Halloween shows this year, and the first one is already up. It just went up this morning, so you can yeah. hear that, which is a lot of... Uh, not so much the monster mash and, and all the hits, but mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of the rare stuff, the unheard, forgotten Halloween classics, and there are hundreds of them. So yeah, I'm going to play as, uh, on this show, I play as many of those as I can. And then uh, the show that's coming up next Saturday, that's going to be the top 20 all time Halloween favorites. You know, I think it's probably better that you're doing what you're doing and being on the internet exclusively. I certainly can't say nothing against it because that's what we do. But I, I really think radio stations are, are missing out on the fact that they don't carry your show anymore. I, I think that's that's bad on their part because they're really missing something. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it'll come back like vinyl records are coming back. Definitely. <laughs> well, Dr. Domeno, I have another question uh, that's from our All audience, right. and they're wanting to know... Uh, this person says, I know that it's got to be hard for him to pick just a couple, but if Dr. D had to pick one or two of his favorite songs, Halloween or not, which would they be? Well, of course, uh, I'm going to go with the audience. Uh, The most requested songs of all time, it's a dead heat. It's a tie between Fish Heads and Dead Puppies. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, probably third place would be, they're coming to take me away, ha-ha, to the funny farm. (laughs) And And then there would be the collected works of Weird Al Yankovic. He's by far my most requested artist, but it's spread among dozens, hundreds of songs with him. Well, you you know, you got to say something about him and the fact that a lot of your uh, releases that are out by people, which are you know often known as novelty recordings, they're here and they're there, and you don't really hear of them anymore. But Al's still there, man. I mean, wow. Oh yeah. 
And there are other people who do funny music today uh, on TV and on iTunes and YouTube, especially YouTube. Uh, people like uh, The Lonely Island. Uh, most of their stuff is not really family-oriented, oriented, shall we say, but mm -hmm. a lot of people really enjoy it. And uh, people like John Cozart or uh, the, the people do the... Uh, the epic rap battles of history. They're a lot yes. of fun. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, we want to talk a little bit more about the event now. I think it's really okay. cool. I didn't really know you were going to be actually playing music. I mean, that's awesome. I love to see you uh, uh, basically be an MC, but to actually see you do your thing in person. I mean, that's something yeah. that's a show yeah, all I'll have my uh, two, two CD players and a microphone. That's one thing I will say about CDs. I'm, I'm getting it's flashbacks. Lot, it's I'm a thinking. lot easier than carting crates of 33 and a thirds around. Yeah, we used to do <laughs> record shows. We used to do record shows back in the 80s, and the amount of stuff yeah. you had to haul, like you, your back would be totally broke. But it yeah, is and then very you, handy. you press a couple of buttons, and the song starts exactly <laughs> when you want it. That, that's why we, we like CDs and radio. Most radio stations today just use hard drives, but yeah. uh, uh, CDs are what I'm going to be using uh, at the Zombie Walk. So I want to know, to give you an idea about how much I know about you, okay? Uh, very long-time member. Have, I was subscribed for quite a while to your oh, fan okay, club with, with the basement tapes and that. Do you still do that? Uh, we haven't done one since '09, but uh, the last three years still available. Uh, you can go to drdemento.com and get the details. Fantastic. Now, in I gotta t I gotta talk to you about one more thing. You sure. know, there's a movie being made about me. Oh wow! Snap. Yeah. Yes. Let me no, know. It's called, it's called Under the Smogberry Trees, <laughs> and it's a documentary all about me, about the Doctor Demento show, and about my life and the people around me. And uh, we we've, we've interviewed lots of great people, like uh, Jimmy Fallon. It turns out that he was a big fan of the show when he was a kid. Uh, same with Jack Black. And, of course, we've interviewed uh, Weird Al Yankovic and uh, lots of other people who were heard on the show. So, right. Uh, look for that sometime next year. I am so happy to hear that, Doctor, because, man, I'm telling you, okay, I can't think of, uh, of a better person to have have a documentary on. That's awesome. I am so going to be looking for that. Yeah, you've interviewed well, so you. many people like, like Frank Zappa. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I had him on the show several times, uh, went to his house. Uh, they're a very interesting fellow. Well, yes. I don't think a lot of radio people gets enough credit, but I want to make sure that everybody knows how important you are. To, to give you an idea about how many people have grown up with you, just one of our listeners, she actually sent me a little quote about you that I wanted to have my daughter read here. Uh, okay. She says, I used to listen to Dr. Demento every Sunday when he was on in L.A., and I was in high school. So uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for the good old Dr. D. He is a great musicologist and opened my mind to the roots of American music. I ho owe him a great debt for that knowledge and the enjoyment it brings. I wrote him a letter about a Bessie Smith song I heard, and I still have the postcard he sent back to me with information about the song Empty Bed Blues. And I don't think she'll oh, mind right. if I, I tell people she's now 58. <laughs> so long-time <laughs> fan. Yes. Yeah, the Empty Bed Blues. Uh, that, that was a, a great one. Yes, Bessie Smith. So, yeah, I, I was a, quite a blues scholar for a while and still certainly am, am very much attached to that. But uh, if you want to know what I was into before I became Dr. Demento, that right. was it. It was blues and traditional music. Wow. Now, I don't imagine you are because I don't really know the status. I know that Rhino Records was purchased out by Warner Brothers. I don't even know if they yeah. use that label anymore. Have you done anything? Oh, they with, do. Have you done anything with them uh, since your your last anniversary collection? Uh, no, not not lately. Uh, so, on, on, you know, they, uh, they they've moved on, and yeah. I've moved on too. I'd I'd love to have another CD collection, whether it's with them or with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's still a few copies of the 20th anniversary collection around and the Christmas album. Those are, are still available. Well, one of my favorite uh, Halloween CDs is your Scary Tunes CD. I mean, that, that's an awesome oh, yes. collection. Yes. Definitely... Now, that, that one's out of print, but we'll s certainly be playing some tracks uh, uh, from that on Friday night. Definitely. Well, uh, let me ask you another question in regards to the Long Beach Zombie Walk. Now, the pr yeah. the press release says that you're coming on stage headlining at, headlining at 8 p.m., and, of course, that is following Count Smokula and the Radioactive yeah. Chicken Heads. Now, if somebody oh, yeah. attends the event, is that the first time they're going to be able to see you, or are you going to be at the event and around before that? Uh, I, I was planning on, on arriving uh, at 8 p.m., or let's see, when I'm looking at my schedule now. So, yeah, 8 <laughs> 
Uh, excuse me, I was looking at the, the Saturday night sure, schedule right. for a while, but <laughs> yeah, you know, Friday night, yeah, it's uh, it's 8 p.m. Yeah, okay. I mean, I might be around, but uh, th that's when I'll be on stage. Right, and uh, now fans of yours need to come on Friday because you're only going to be there on Friday, right? Yeah, all, only Friday. That's that's right. One night only. <laughs> of course, there's there's another fine program the next night, but I'm I'm only there on Friday. Now, I, I've got to ask. I, I went to a couple Weird Al concerts, and it was very strange because a lot of the fans come dressed as Weird Al. Do you have yes. people come dressed as Dr. Demento? Oh, it has happened. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something funny. We first got, I told you the other host, here's my daughter. We first moved to L.A., okay, whenever you go to L.A., you're always thinking, I'm going to run into a celebrity, you think everybody's a celebrity. We had found ourselves down into uh, a Jewish area. And she had saw a rabbi, and she thought it was Dr. Demento. I so wanted to meet Dr. Demento. That was all that was on my mind, okay? Oh, oh with a top hat. Eh? Yes. <laughs> yes. And yeah. a black suit, okay. Yes. Their suit is definitely kind of like the one you wear a little bit. No, I am, I'm not a rabbi, but uh, yeah, I, 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 get, I see what you mean. And I remember from conversations from the old days, you were also a big uh, fan of trains. Oh, yes. Yeah. Woo, woo. Yeah. <laughs> That's very much so, yeah. Well, we need to get you. Uh, in the, we need to get you in the big. I'm, go ahead. Yeah, if I'm not listening to funny music, I may be watching a train video, or yeah. even when I get a chance, riding a train. So, wow. yeah, it's, it's something I've been into since I was a little kid. Well, I'm so glad you're doing what you're doing, and I imagine you got a nice little recording studio built there in your house. Yeah, sure. And, yes, and I do. And you know, so you're now legitimate, and and we feel like we're legitimate too because. Nowadays, yeah. all musical artists do stuff at home. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's a way to do it. Now yeah. things have changed so much. Uh, what? What's some? Uh, you were talking about songs. You say you don't know what you're going to play yet. Can you mention off the top of your head? I'm trying to remember. Is there any zombie songs that are demented? Oh, there's lots. Yeah, let me let me see. Uh, I played some on last weekend's show. So let me let me get the. The shows all kind of blend together after a while, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's see. Last week in show, there was uh, uh, well, there's a song called. Actually, this will be on uh, the other. This, definitely, I'll play this uh, uh, on uh, Friday night. It's called "Re Your Brains," <laughs> and it is a song uh, by Jonathan Colton, who's a very popular and a very talented singer-songwriter these days. And it's all about how zombies take over a business office. And the whole thing is done in the language that people use to write business memos to each other. So, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, wow. Probably the best-known zombie song over a long period of time would be Zombie Jamboree. Back to back, belly to belly, oh, I don't yes. give a darn because I've done that already. Back to back, belly to belly at the Zombie Jamboree. That's an old Calypso song, but the, the group Rockapella did a popular version of that. Um, let's see, then there's Zombified by Southern Culture on the Skids, a uh, popular group in some circles. And, uh, of course, there's uh, things like uh, the movie Plan 9 from Outer Space, which has to do in part with zombies. Oh, uh, on the, the show that I just put online, there's a, a wonderful song. I'll certainly play this uh, Friday night, too. Uh, it, it's done kind of straight, like almost a cocktail lounge number, but it's called Cha-Cha-Cha with the Zombies. And it was done <laughs> That's awesome. all around, around 1960, 61, back in there. Of all the songs you've ever played and all the songs you've really helped uh, bring to people's attention, is there any song you used to play that you just can't stand now? But it's like, <laughs> I don't want to hear that song no more. Uh, well, it, it doesn't matter. If the public likes it, I'll play it. That's my job. There you go, and you're my man to do it, too. I mean, that's the <laughs> yeah. way to say it. Uh, so well, we, I, I have a question, though. I mean, because yeah. things, you know, used to be a little bit different than they are today, and, and now today you can get some comedy music that is very, very risque, very sexual, and yeah. can mm -hmm. be very, you know, blunt, and also mm -hmm. have a lot of cuss words and all this kind of stuff. Is there anything that... Is there any line that you won't cross? I mean, do you keep in mind that you're trying to, do you try to keep it kind of PG for families, or is it kind of like whatever? I do. It's, it's PG-13. I uh, Now that I'm on the Internet, I don't mind the occasional four-letter word as long as it isn't really graphic. Mm -hmm. I'll put it that way, because families do listen. Yeah. But uh, families today, they can, they can stand the occasional four-letter word as long as the whole thing isn't concerned with really graphic or, or really strange uh, or or 
hurt, hurtful sex. Right. You know, I won't play anything like that. And, and there's some there's some comedy things around today that are funny, but I kind of consider them maybe a little crass. Mm -hmm. A couple of the Lonely Island songs are maybe in that category, but uh, I, I, I try to be fairly loose with these things and not not certainly not be a prude at any time so do you still have a, a lot of up-and-coming comedians that send you stuff because i know that even us because we do play a lot of comedy music on on our show we'll get mm -hmm. a lot of people that'll send us cds and some of them is great and some of them it's kind of like ooh, okay no uh so do you well <laughs> I, I do i listen to a lot of those i listen to the good ones you know the good ones are, are great it really is exciting when i hear something new that's good Something that's really, really bad, sometimes that's kind of fun, too. There's things that are so <laughs> bad that are good. The ones that are in between, sometimes that gets to be a little bit of drudgery. Is this good enough to play on the show? Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. You know, trying to make that decision. So uh, that, that can be... That's not my favorite part of doing the <laughs> show, but it has to be done. Right. And then uh, another question from a listener. Uh, could you please ask Dr. D if he has ever heard any Exuma songs, which is the voodoo music. Exuma, yeah. Uh, it rings a bell, not for a while, but I have to check into that. Have to yeah, that's something you don't find very right often. About that. Voodoo music. Go to Walmart <laughs> and try to buy some today. I, I dare you to try. Uh, I well, know I, I guess maybe in Cuba you could still hear some of that I'm back sure. in the I'm sure. Probably on the top ten. Uh, I, I, one thing you used to do that I used to love uh, back in the day, and I think you did that on like your college tour. I, I've got an old Rhino videotape, and it was uh, you on stage, and you would have uh, bas basically acts on it. Is that you ever do any live shows where you have acts? Or, I mean, other than this thing that you're doing here at the Zombie Walk, or maybe college oh, tours? Oh, my live acts, sure, we've done that. I mean, that's how Weird Al began his career. Yeah. He he started his career by doing uh, like a 20 minute set in the middle of the shows that I used to do. Yeah. So, and then, so uh, who would be the most famous? But uh, yeah, whenever, whenever it's possible, I'll do something like that. I mean, uh, there'll be some fine live acts at the Zombie Walk. So I don't know if I'll be uh, having live music in the middle of my set, but uh, I, I certainly do that. Right. Well, one more question before we wrap this up, Doctor. Uh, another question from a listener. They're wanting to know if I wanted to get an autographed picture from Doctor Demento, how would I do that? Well, uh, if, uh, if you come to Zombie Walk, I'll do my best to uh, to do that, depending on the logistics there, but uh, I'll certainly bring some Sharpies and do my best. Uh, you can send a self-addressed envelope to me at uh, P.O. Box 884, Culver City, California, 90232. Uh, send a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll uh, send back an autograph for you. Uh, so that's another way you can do it. All right, perfect. God, well, you've had you you've had it. that PO you've had that PO box forever. <laughs> uh, yeah, since uh, 1980. I think. It was. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I can't tell you enough. It, it's such an honor having you on. I've had some really big names, and I think I'm more flustered talking to you than talking to anybody because <laughs> you mean so much to me. I mean, you really are a legend, and I'm so happy that you're still doing what you're doing because we've never needed you more than we need you right now. Oh, thank you. Well, I need you too. So, thank you so much. Great to talk with you, and uh, hope to see you all, everybody who's listening at the Zombie Walk. Absolutely. Friday evening in beautiful Long Beach, California, yes. Perfect, and just reminding listeners, you can get more details by going to zombiewalklb.com. That's zombiewalklb.com, and while you're surfing on the web, make sure to visit drdemento.com as well. Uh, doctor, we want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been such an honor. Yo, zombiewalklb.com. You don't want to get the zombie walk in Poughkeepsie. That'd be a long way to walk. <laughs> that would be. That would be. <laughs> All right. let, let me ask you to end this the way you've always ended every radio show, and I'm sure you know what that is. Yeah, don't forget to stay demented. He's been doing it so long, he doesn't need cue cards. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Have a great Halloween and a great rest of the weekend. Okay, cool. Radio, go, go. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> All right, you. good night, doctor. Good night.